Hello everyone, welcome to Wildwood Studio. I'm Sarah, and in this video, I'm going to be burning a memorial pet portrait. So if you like this sort of content, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. Okay, so let's get started. First off, this is my 30th video, so there's a fun little milestone, and we've got 3,000 subscribers now. And because there's more and more of you watching these videos, I decided to buy a camera. Before now, I'd just been filming everything on my iPhone, the problem is, is that I have never owned a real camera before, so the video quality in this video has suffered a little bit because I didn't know how to optimize the settings. It's actually a bit disappointing for me because I was like, yay, finally I have a camera, my videos will be so much better now, so much more professional, and the first thing I film on it is actually worse. But I figured it out now, I watched a couple YouTube videos and I'm basically an expert, so my next video should look much nicer. Or at least a little bit nicer. And I didn't just want to scrap this project and all this footage because it was a bit grainy, so I hope that you'll bear with me. For this artwork, the cat in the picture belonged to a family friend who's always been very supportive of my artwork. And her cat sadly died last year, so I thought I would burn a picture of him as a gift to them to say thank you for all the support. Because this is meant to commemorate a lost pet, I've decided to include his name in the burning. This isn't a complicated thing to do, I just chose a font that I liked and transferred it onto the wood at the same time that I was transferring the image. But even though it's a very simple composition, I did do a little mock-up in Photoshop first, just so that I could try out different fonts and cropping and move the positioning of the words around a bit to see what I liked. I did this because erasing pencil off of wood can be a bit of a pain, and you usually have to use sandpaper to really get it off, so it's easier to just decide all of that in advance instead of messing around with it on the wood. I actually did a similar pet portrait of my hamster a few years ago. His name was Merlin, and it turned out really cute, so it's still on my bookshelf, and it's nice because he died a while ago. I mean, hamsters obviously don't live very long, and I still have a little picture of him. So I find that this kind of burning can be a really nice way to commemorate a lost pet. I will have to get around to doing a burning of my current pets sooner or later. I don't think I've mentioned this in a video, but I have two chinchillas. Their names are Oliver and Artemis. They're both boys, and before you tell me yes, I know that Artemis is the name of a goddess and is thus a girl's name, but really we could have named him Mittens or Toast. So we pretty much just decided that we don't care. I mean, he's a chinchilla, he doesn't know. Actually, now that I think of it, it would have been much worse to name him Mittens. Anyway, so with this burning, originally the picture is just Jasper the cat sitting out in the grass, but I decided not to include the grass, instead I just made the background black. This is because the grass is not an important part of the picture, and I wanted the cat to be the main focus, and I think adding too much texture in the background would have taken away from that. To make the letters stand out, I've left them white and just shaded around them. I did this by outlining them first, and then I went around them after with my spoon shader. Since the letters are sitting on top of the black background, I just went ahead and filled in the rest of the background dark once I was done with that. And as always, I paid attention to the direction of my pen strokes while I was burning the background to keep a nice neat texture. I did the background of my spoon shader as well. People often ask me about what pens I use and what I would recommend for beginners, but I really mostly just use the four pens that originally came with my razor tip system. So that's the spoon shader, the ball tip pen, the small round tip, and the knife tip. Other than those, I've bought two others, a spear tip and a small spear tip, and they don't really do a lot that the original ones didn't, so I wouldn't say that they're totally necessary to start out. I just don't really buy new equipment all that often, so I have trouble giving advice when I'm pretty much still using the starter set. One thing that I do think is important is that it's better to buy a high quality system with just a few pens than going for something that's not going to be good but has like 35 different pen tips. Since I think that there's a lot you can do with a restricted number of pen tips, but if your machine takes a long time to heat up or cool down or just isn't good quality or is gonna melt in your hands, that's gonna be a much bigger problem. And of course, with a nice system like a razor tip or a Colwood system, you can always go buy new pens if you feel you need something that's gonna do a different effect or something that you can't do with the pens you got to begin with later on once you start burning. I have been thinking about going and getting another shader, something that'll do smoother shading for background since the spoon shader tends to leave a bit of a texture, unless I go very slow on a lower heat but then it takes forever and I'm a little impatient. The texture is mostly caused by the round spoon-like shape of the tip, so I think that a flatter shader might do away with that, especially for larger areas. Back to my process for this burning. Once I was done with the background, I started on some of the fur around the bottom edge where it blends into the dark shading on the bottom right corner. From there, I moved on to the face, which is where it really started to come to life as always. When I was doing the whiskers, because they're supposed to be white, I outlined them first with my knife tip pen before shading behind them with my spoon shader. This is just so that I don't end up shading over where the whiskers are supposed to be, since it's really hard to erase something that you've burned. 
And because the fur behind the whiskers is quite dark, I did the outline dark as well because it's quicker and it will disappear for the most part once I'm done shading what's behind it. One thing that I try and keep in mind anytime I'm burning for a texture is the direction of the fur. Anytime you're doing fur, it's really important that it's all going in the right direction. This applies to really dark areas where it would seem like it doesn't matter and you won't see it, but this is one of the things that I think contributes to realistic looking fur overall. Also, I try and keep my pen strokes the same length as the fur looks. This keeps it from looking too flat. For example, you can hopefully see that the length of my pen strokes around his eyes and forehead are much shorter than around the sides of his face and the top of his head where the fur is longer. In terms of tips for how I do fur texture in general, I use my spoon shader pen and I press down at the beginning of all of my strokes. Not like pressing down hard, but enough to make contact with more of the pen's surface, and then I lift up at the end. This gives me a nice tapered effect and allows me to create overlapping fur with lots of shadows and different sections. I've seen people do fur texture with a skew type pen, like the knife tip pen, so they're basically drawing in almost every hair, and they end up with a much finer texture, but I've just always done it this way, and I like the way that it looks for the most part. Also, I think that it's kind of faster. In general, I always find pet portraits are really fun to do. I prefer burning pictures of people's pets to burning pictures of people. And I've noticed that a lot of wood burners end up burning many, many pet portraits since the medium of burning lends itself so well to making pictures of animals and a pet is usually a person's favorite animal. So they're much more likely to commission an artwork of their pet than of a random animal. Most of the commission requests I get are either for a portrait of a loved one, which is not really my favorite thing to burn, or a portrait of a pet, which is the sort of commission that I'm much more likely to want to do. Constantly doing burnings of people's pets can get a bit repetitive since most people just have a cat or a dog, so sadly I can't do these all the time, but that's really for your sake more than it is for mine, since cats and dogs are always good subjects and I really like drawing them, but I think it would get a little bit stale in my videos pretty quickly. I mean, what is this, my fourth or fifth cat burning video already? Let me know if this is getting boring. <laughs> So for this one, since Jasper is a black cat, I've chosen a picture with strong lighting so that he doesn't just look flat. This will give me a lot more to work with in terms of shading, which can be difficult with a solid black or white animal. I still found it a bit challenging to make him not look too flat and to keep him from blending into the background. One thing I did to keep the separation between him and the background was to leave a bit of a white highlight along the edge of his face and his ear. This wasn't part of the picture, but I added it because otherwise he would have faded right into the dark background. I also went back in with a white pencil crayon after I was done. I did this for his whiskers, his eyes, the letters, and a couple of other places, and I like the way that it looks, since at the end of the day, even the parts that I don't burn aren't gonna be totally white since the wood isn't white, so it just adds a bit of contrast. And this is true even though I'm working on basswood, which is a very pale wood with very little grain. It's still not going to be white like a white pencil crayon. Once I was done, I put a couple of coats of varnish on this. If you're interested in which product I use for this and why, I have a whole video about that that I posted a little while ago, so I'll link to that in the description if you'd like to watch that video after you're done with this one. The last thing I did with this was take it to get it framed. So here it is with the frame. I really love how framing my burnings just makes them look so much more complete. So I think I'm gonna frame them all before my next show. Although that would be really, really expensive. So maybe I'll just frame my favorites. Anyway, here is the finished burning. As always, please let me know what you think in the comments, and if you want to see more of my work, you can check out my Facebook page or follow me on Instagram. Also, please make sure to like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss all my future art videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.